Welcome to Electron Online. Now we're going to talk about equipotential surfaces. So let's assume we have two metal plates, one that has positive charge on it, the other one that has negative charge on it, that kind of like capacitor plates. And so there's an electric field between them, directed from the positive to the negative charge. And also assume that on one end we keep the potential at zero volts, and let's say therefore the potential on the other end is 100 volts. So there's a 100 volt difference between them. Remember that the electric field strength is equal to the ratio of the change in the potential divided by the distance over which we travel. So the distance would be this distance right here. So in this case we can say that the change in potential, E times V, is equal to the strength of the electric field times the distance over which we travel. So that causes this to be 100 volts based upon that uh, the electric field strength. So let's say, for example, that D is equal to 10 centimeters. So in that case, we can say that uh, here we have 100 volts potential difference divided by 0 0.1 meter, which is equal to 1,000 volts per meter. So that's an indication of the strength of the electric field. For every meter traveled between those two plates, the potential will change by 1,000 volts. Or you can say that the change in potential is equal to the strength of the field, which is 1,000 volts per meter, travel 0 0.1 meter, that would be equal to 100 volts. Which would also mean that if you travel a shorter distance, let's say only 2 centimeters, so the delta V would be equal to 1,000 volts per meter times 0 0.02 meters, in other words, 2 centimeters, that would only be 20 volts. So for every 2 centimeters traveled, the potential will drop by 20 volts or increase by 20 volts depending upon which direction you go. So if you go from here, you travel, you travel uh, 2 centimeters, then the potential at that location would only be 80 volts. So this would be 80 volts. Travel another 2 centimeters, now this would be 60 volts. Another 2 centimeters would be 40 volts. Another 2 centimeters would be 20 volts. And eventually you get down to 0 volts. So these lines that I drew here, now of course these lines really represent surfaces because these are plates that are parallel to each other. So these are like regions or planes or surfaces. So all along that surface the potential is 80 volts. All along the next surface it's 60 volts and so forth. So these are what we call equipotential surfaces because there the potential is the same, equal, and so we call them their equipotential surfaces. Now what's interesting about them is, if you travel along an equipotential surface, if you travel along that surface, the potential doesn't change at all. But in other words, if you take a charge and you move it along an equipotential surface, there's no work involved because the potential doesn't change, that means you're traveling perpendicular to the electric field. So it's really important to notice here that equipotential surfaces are always perpendicular to the electric field. And therefore traveling along equipotential surfaces means traveling perpendicular to the electric field means it requires no work if a charge is moved along an equipotential surface. Alright, so hopefully that gives you a feel of what equipotential surfaces are. Potential doesn't change. Work is not required to move from point A to point B. Let's do a quick example. Let's say that we move a, um, a charge. Let's place a charge right there. Let's call it Q. And let's move it to another location right there, from there to there. What is the work required to do so? And the answer is zero work because potential didn't change. But if you move it from there to there, then you know work is required because the potential does change. The work in this case would be equal to the change in potential times the charge. And so in this case, what is the change in potential going from there to there? Well, it went from 20 volts to 60 volts, so the change was a positive 40 volts. That's a positive 40 volts times the charge, and that would be the amount of work required to get there. What if we move from this Q over to this location right there? Again, it doesn't matter what the length of the path is, the only thing that really matters is how much the potential has changed. So in this case, you can see that the potential changed the same amount, it went from 20 volts to 60 volts, the potential difference is 40 volts, the charge is Q, it would take exactly the same amount of work to go from this location to that location as it would from this location to that location, and no work at all to travel in this direction or this direction, anywhere along the potential, equipotential surface, it would require no work at all. That's how we do that.